You're listening to the Astromommy Daily Horoscope, a forecast that hopes to shine a light in the dark, helping us all see where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Whether you're a first-time listener or a long-time subscriber, thanks for being here. I truly appreciate you being in the Astromommy community. I hope you enjoy today's horoscope and card reading. If you would like to support the Astromommy newsletter, there are several ways to do so. Subscribe on Substack, share it with a friend, schedule a reading, check out my family's Etsy shop, Metaphysical Flamingo, or just leave a tip. Without further ado, here is the Daily Horoscope. Hybrid solar eclipse and Aries coming on Wednesday, Thursday. Here's what you need to know. Daily Horoscope for Monday and Tuesday, April 17th through the 18th, 2023. Good morning, friends. Okay, let's get into the astrology. First, before we talk about the eclipse, I want to say a few words about the astrology of today and tomorrow as we approach the eclipse. On Monday, the moon is in Pisces and is in her dark moon phase, the balsamic phase of her cycle, which is about release and letting go as she approaches the new moon phase. The moon will conjoin Neptune on Monday afternoon at 2.56 p.m. Eastern time, and this could be a really chaotic time when people may feel confused or in a fog emotionally. It's just really hard to see where to go or what to do, and the only thing you can do is trust your inner guidance system, your intuition, to get you through the fog. Then the moon ingresses into the sign of Aries at 9.09 p.m. Eastern Time. The Aries moon is full of initiatory energy and wants to be first, to start things, and to above all else express her individuality and pioneering spirit. As a dark moon, this Aries energy could be a bit impulsive, and with the sextile to Pluto that will form shortly after she ingresses into Aries, it's important to understand that although feelings may surface easily, we must still think before we speak and take action on things. The moon will also form semi-squares to both Mercury and Uranus and Taurus, and this is indicative of something unexpected happening or being said that we really don't have any control over and honestly can't do anything about. Then on Tuesday, the moon in Aries forms a sextile to Venus and a square to Mars, so there could be some positive things about Tuesday and also some more challenging aspects that happen. Mixed emotions may be common as we all try to figure out what is happening in our lives and which direction to take. With the moon making a square to Mars on Tuesday, watch out for arguments, fights, and overreactions to occur. Now, let's talk about the eclipse. The hybrid solar eclipse in Aries. Well, we have a hybrid solar eclipse coming up this week, late Wednesday night at 9.12 p.m. on the West Coast and early Thursday at 12.12 a.m. Eastern Time, so the 19th and the 20th, depending on your time zone. A hybrid solar eclipse is the rarest type of eclipse, according to the website Space Edge Academy, and occurs only 5% of the time. So what is it? There are four types of eclipses. Total, where the sun is blocked by the moon completely. Partial, where the moon takes a bite out of the sun. Annular, where the moon covers the center of the sun, but not totally, so there is a ring, the ring of fire, around the moon, and hybrid. This is a combination of an annular and a total. So the moon moves across the sun, and there's a ring of fire, and then completely covers the sun, and then moves again, so there is another ring of fire before moving on. Depending on where you are observing the eclipse, you will see one type and not the other. Here is what Space.com has to say about the upcoming hybrid solar eclipse on April 19th through the 20th, 2023. Quote, A hybrid solar eclipse combines an annular and a total solar eclipse where the former becomes the latter and then usually reverts back. Therefore, observers at different points in the eclipse path can experience different phenomena. For example, if you watch a hybrid solar eclipse at sunrise or at sunset, you may see a brief ring of fire. If you watch it at midday, so at the midpoint of the eclipse's path, across the surface of Earth, you'll experience totality. It's therefore impossible to experience both an annular and a total solar eclipse during a hybrid event. You have to make a choice, unquote. I think this is so interesting. You have to make a choice between your experience. How true, right? So we have this big event coming up this week, a rare hybrid solar eclipse, where we will have to make a choice, and it is at the very tail end of Aries, the sign associated with free will and independence. Solar eclipses are always new moons, which we have every month, but this new moon is special on two major accounts. It is the second new moon in Aries, and it is a rare hybrid eclipse. So this is like a super amplified new moon that represents both a release of the old and a new start in an escalated way. From my research, the last time that we had a solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries was April 19th, 2004. 
In 2004, we also had two new moons in Aries, one at zero degrees Aries and the next at 29 degrees Aries, which was the eclipse, exactly like what we are having now, except that it was not a hybrid solar eclipse, but rather a partial solar eclipse. Another difference is that back in 2004, Jupiter was not in Aries, but rather in Virgo, his detriment. So in 2004, we didn't have the beneficial support of Jupiter strongly influencing the eclipse. Jupiter is the planet of abundance, wealth, and optimism, and is very close to the solar eclipse, so we have an optimistic, expansive quality going on this time. This may represent something very supportive happening in whatever house Aries rules in your natal chart. Here is the chart of the upcoming hybrid solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries, 50 minutes, and below that is the chart of the last partial solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries in 2004, just as an interesting comparison. You can see in the 2023 chart that Jupiter is at 23 degrees of Aries, which is only 6 degrees away from the eclipse at 29 degrees. Back in 2004, it was Mercury that was conjoined the eclipse at 25 degrees Aries, but had already stationed retrograde. Think back to what was going on in your life in April of 2004 and see if there are any parallels to what occurs during the next few weeks after this eclipse. I am curious if you find any similarities. One of the things I should note is that back in 2004, we were dealing with Sorrow Cycle 6 North, and this eclipse is with Sorrow Cycle 7 North. So there are fundamental differences to the actual eclipse energies. What are Sorrow Cycles? Quote, astrologers have traditionally tended to view eclipses as wild cards whose occurrence can be predicted in timing, but whose results vary dramatically from one eclipse to another. Yet each eclipse does belong to a larger pattern. Each eclipse is a member of a family and each family has characteristics, unquote, says astrologer Bernadette Brady in her book, Predictive Astrology, The Eagle and the Lark. Quote, these families or cycles have beginnings, middles and ends and were first discovered by the Babylonians. Any one cycle will run for well over a thousand years, making the study of individual eclipses equivalent to sitting and watching a giant hardwood tree grow, unquote, Brady articulates. She goes on to explain that, quote, by 747 BC, the Babylonians could accurately predict the timing of an eclipse and indeed by the 4th century BC had recognized that the eclipses occurred in series. These series were named Sorrow Series or Cycles by the Greek lexicographer Suidas in the 10th century AD. The word Sorrows means repetition or to be repeated, unquote. So the family of eclipses that we are encountering this year, Sorrow Series 7 North, has a different beginning, middle, and end than that of the family of eclipses we experienced in 2004. Each eclipse family has a natal chart, which describes the nature of that family, much like how a natal chart describes the characteristics of the native to which that chart belongs. So we can look at the natal chart of Sorrow Series 7 North to get an idea of how this eclipse may affect us. Using the astrology program Solar Fire, I was able to look up the birth chart for Sorrow Series 7 North, and this is what was cast. The birth chart for Sorrow Series 7 North happened on October 3rd, 1103. Solar Fire automatically cast a chart from my own location, but I'm not sure that makes any difference for the purposes of this post. You can see in this chart from the year 1103 AD that the partial solar eclipse, the new moon, was in Libra opposing Pluto in Aries. You can also see that Venus was in her detriment at 6 degrees Scorpio and Mars was at 23 degrees Virgo, and the eclipse at 15 degrees Libra was exactly in between Venus and Mars, located at their midpoint. So we have an eclipse cycle that represents a new beginning in relationships, being that it is in the sign of Libra, a Venus-ruled sign that deals with relationships of all kinds, that is opposite Pluto in Aries, indicating an irrevocable change occurring within the individual who has to make a choice that has to do with matters of a Venusian nature and a Martian nature. So we're talking about love, relationships, and values, as well as actions, sexuality, and passion. Brady describes this sorrow series as, quote, a very sensual family of eclipses, ranging from sudden sexual passions and lust to birth and procreative drives. This series is not subtle and can catch people off guard and confront them with their own very deep passion, which may have been hidden for many years, unquote. By knowing this information, we can delineate a bit more about this particular eclipse and say that it may have a lot more to do with a major change in regard to a romantic relationship than we can just by looking at where the eclipse is occurring in your natal chart. This gives us a much deeper layer to explore. I will be putting together sun and rising sign horoscopes for this eclipse on Wednesday, so be sure to check that post out if you'd like more information about how this eclipse may manifest in your own life. 
To summarize, this eclipse coming up on Wednesday represents a new beginning in whatever area of life is being activated in your natal chart. So whatever house is ruled by Aries, um, this new beginning could be felt in a big way that looks positive due to Jupiter being so close to this new moon. This eclipse could also have underlying flavors of romance, lust, and passionate desires of the life-changing variety. According to Brady, the years between 1900 and 2050, when we have and will encounter eclipses from Saros Series 7 North are... 1915, 1933, 1951, 1969, 1987, 2005, 2023, and 2041. With all of that information in mind about the upcoming eclipse energy, we can conclude that there is a big shift coming and it's time to ready ourselves emotionally for whatever this may be. As was said earlier, eclipse energy is a wild card and depends on many different factors, so I feel it may be best to try to relax during the next two weeks and keep an open mind as events unfold. Even though it is a new moon and a new beginning, it may be best to wait to start anything intentionally until after the eclipse energy has passed. So that is after the lunar eclipse in two weeks' time. Let's see how this plays out first before we make any big moves. Venus is in Gemini right now, so we are gathering information and collecting data about our love life, relationships, what we value, and our finances in order to try to understand the shifts that are happening in our world. So I think with Venus and Mercury both being in each other's signs, Venus in Gemini and Mercury in Taurus, and Mercury about to station retrograde on April 21st, this is the time to gather the information and get clear on the plans, especially for our environments and what we are building for the long term. Mercury is only two degrees away from a conjunction to Uranus, so change is coming. But this retrograde cycle and this eclipse feel like a heads up to get prepared for whatever shock is coming up next. Do what you need to do to mentally prepare for changes. Get your affairs in order. File that paperwork. Communicate with those that you need to communicate with. Be proactive. Let's move on to the card for the day. What is the guidance for today? Five, the Hierophant. On this card, you see the Hierophant wearing a triple crown and holding a triple staff, which symbolizes the spiritual, mental, and physical worlds. At his feet are two neophytes kneeling. The Hierophant represents the church, the law, and organized religion. It symbolizes faith in yourself, in your religion, or in your family. It also represents the teacher-student relationship and the concepts of learning and teaching. I feel as the guidance card for the day. This is a reminder that we have all the gifts and intuitive knowledge to handle whatever change we are experiencing right now or will be experiencing. Have faith in that which you believe in and that which you know is looking out for you. Have faith that everything will work out for your highest good. This card is representing to me that we could be experiencing certain tests or challenges, but these tribulations will ultimately help us heal and grow as soulful beings. This is a big week astrologically. I hope that this newsletter was packed with interesting information and things to contemplate as we progress through the eclipse energy this week. Please let me know your thoughts and reflections in the comments. I hope this is helpful. Until Wednesday, Astro Mommy. Thank you for reading or listening to The Daily Horoscope. Quick links and resources can be found at the bottom of the newsletter. Today's card was pulled from the Roland Nordic Tarot, available on Amazon. If you seek knowledge and enlightenment, the Astro Mommy newsletter may be right for you. Side effects of reading or listening to the Astro Mommy newsletter are common and include joy, jubilation, delight, happiness, gratitude, love, triumph, feeling in tune with the universe, experiencing deep insights, reflections, and contemplations, a lightened soul, a lighter step, feeling awake when others are asleep, illuminated, enlightened, having spiritual experiences, noticing repeating numbers, animals in nature, or songs on the radio that speak to you, getting vibes, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsmellions, feeling like you know secret language, biophilia, crying tears of joy, emotional literacy, feeling lively, stable, exalted, having an auric glow, or feeling like you woke up on the right side of the bed have all been reported. If you purchase anything through the affiliate links that I provide in the newsletters, I will make a very small commission. Thanks for listening.